Hello everyone! So in this video, we will be discussing about Wallis formula. And Wallis formula comes in this form. We have the definite integral of sine raised to mx cos raised to nx dx from 0 to pi over 2. So in that case, if we have the integrand, we have a definite integral of this form that is also said to be equivalent with our Wallis formula, which is m minus 1 times m minus 3 times m minus 5 until the result is either 1 or 2 and also multiplied with our n minus 1 n minus 3 n minus 5 until also the result will become 1 or 2 and that is divided by m plus n times m plus n minus 2 times m plus n minus 4 until the result of this one as well will become 1 or 2 and then we also have to multiply it by our lambda in which lambda is equivalent to pi over 2 if m and n are even integers but if it's not an even integers lambda is equivalent to 1 so we have here an, an example uh, the definite integral of cos raised to 5y dy from 0 to pi over 2 since our limits as is already okay now we have to look at our integrand as we know uh, uh, the Wallis formula comes in sine raised to m x but in this case since there is no sign meaning to say our m is equivalent to 0 and as we know the power of our or the exponent of our cosine is the n so meaning to say that is equal to 5 and our lambda will be equal to 1 since our um, exponent is not an even integer so now let's proceed in solving this one uh, using Wallis formula so if our m is equal to 0 we just have to multiply that one by one and then proceed with the process in solving our n which is uh, 5 minus 1 times 5 minus 3 and since the result of this one is already 2 so there's no need for us to continue so that's it then we have the m plus n which is 0 plus 5 that is 5 then we have 5 m plus n minus 2 so we have 5 minus 2 then we have 5 minus 4 since the result of this one is already 1 so there's no need for us to continue as well so, and we have to multiply this with our lambda which is equivalent to 1 now uh, you have to calculate this one this is 4 times 2 that's 8 times 1 that's 8 as well and then we have 3 times uh, 1 so we have 3 times 5 that is 15 so this is now the result of our equation so we have here another example which is the definite integral of sine raised to 5 1 half y cos raised to 7 1 half y dy and our limits 0 to pi but as we know our Wallis formula comes in the form of 0 to pi over 2 sine m x cos and x dx but as you can see the limits here is only pi so meaning to say we have to change our limits to make it as pi over 2 so to change our limits uh we can let this one as our x as you can see so meaning to say x is equal to one half y and then if we substitute our uh, limits our original limits in our y we we can have uh, for upper limits this is for upper limits upper limits we have x is equal to one half times our upper limit which is pi now this is already equivalent to pi over 2 meaning to say we've already changed the limit to pi over 2 now for the lower limit we have to also substitute our lower limit to our y which is uh, one half times zero so we now have our zero so meaning to say this is now our new upper limit and this is our new lower limit and then afterwards as you can see this is uh, 
x, so we also need to find our dx. So I'm going to say our dx from our x is equivalent to 1 half um, dy, 1 half dy. Now to, uh, to get our dy, we have to multiply that one with 1 half. So, meaning to say our dy is equivalent to 2dx. So, since we already uh, solved for our new limits and for our um, integrand, so this will now be equivalent to 0 to pi over 2. And then we have the sine, sine 5x. We also have the cos 7 x we have the our dy is equivalent to 2 dx now this is also equivalent to 2 integral of 0 to pi over 2 then we have the sine raised to 5x cos uh, 7x and then we have the dx so now we can already solve this one uh, using our Wallis formula so I mean to say our m is equivalent to 5 and our n is equivalent to 7 so as you know m and 7 are not even integers so meaning to say our lambda is still equivalent to 1 so now so solving this one using our Wallis formula we have 5 minus 1 times 5 minus 3 that is already 2 so we have to stop there and then for our 7 we have 7 minus 1, 7 minus 3, and then 7 minus 5. 7 minus 5 is already 2, so we also have to stop there. Then we have the divided by 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7 minus 2. Uh, this one is still 10, so we still have to continue. 5 plus 7 minus 4 this is still 8 5 plus 7 minus 6 is still 6 5 plus 7 minus 8 is still 4 and then we still have to continue 5 plus 7 minus 10 this is already 2 so we have to stop there now we also have to multiply this by 1 for our lambda and then as you know we have a 2 here so meaning to say we need to multiply it by 2 as well for our constant now we have 2 times this one uh, 4 we have the 4 times 2 and then we have 6 times 4 times 2 all over 12 we have 10 we have 8 we have 6 4 and 2 and our lambda which is 1 now we need to say we can cancel this one so the result of our um, answer is equivalent to 1 over 60. If you calculate this one, this is uh, equivalent to 1 over 60. So I mean to say our final answer is 1 over 60. We have another example, the definite integral of cos raised to 8, 3 theta d theta from 0 to pi over 6. So as you can see again, our limits is not 0 to pi over 2. Uh, so meaning to say, we need to transform our limits again to make it as 0 to pi over 2. So now, uh, as we know again, we have um, the integral of 0 to pi over 2. And then we have the sine mx cos nx dx. So meaning to say, our 3 theta here, we can let that 1 as our x. So we have x is equal to 3 theta. And uh, to transform our limits, we can substitute our upper limits, our original limits to our theta here. So for upper limits, we can have x is equal to 3 times pi over 6. 
in which 3 divided by 6, that is 1 half. So, meaning to say this is pi over 2. So, we already transform our upper limits. Now, if our, if our lower limits is equivalent to 0, so meaning to say 3 times 0, that is also 0. So, we now have our new transformed uh, limits. So now we just have to find the derivative of this one so that we can replace it here. Now dx is equivalent to 3d theta. So to, to isolate our d theta, uh, we have to divide it both sides by 3. So meaning to say our d theta is equivalent to 1 third dx. So meaning to say we have already we can already transform this one as 0 to pi over 2 and then we have the cos raised to 8x and then we have the dx over 3. Now one third is constant so we can put it outside so we have one third uh, 0 to pi over 2 cos 8x dx. So we have no sign here so meaning to say our m is equivalent to 0, our n is equivalent to 8, and as you can see, our um, n here is even, positive even integer, so meaning to say our lambda is equivalent to pi over 2. So, so solving our integrand using uh, Wally's formula, we have um, m is 0, so we can put that as 1, and then continue with our n. We have 8 minus 1 times 8 minus 3 times 8 minus 5. Since this is still 3, so we have to continue 8 minus 7. 8 minus 7 is 1, so we have to stop here. Now, this is divided by uh, 8. m plus n, 0 plus 8 is 8. So, and then 8 minus 2, we have 6. 8 minus 4, we have 4. 8 minus 6, we have 2. So, meaning to say, we have to stop here. Now, multiplying our uh, by our lambda, which is pi over 2. But we before we forget, we still have 1 third here. So, we have to put it uh, here. That's still multiplied by 1 third. So, uh, multiplying this one, we have one third times uh, our one times seven times five times three times one all over. We have our eight times six times four times 2 times our lambda which is pi over 2 so if you calculate this one this is equivalent to 35 pi over 768 so this is now our final answer so i hope you learned something from this video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you so much.